Hey everybody, Strangers103 here. I hope you guys have had an amazing Christmas and enjoy your holiday season. Truly wish you guys the best. Um, before we get on with this North Carolina replay analysis, this uh, uh, this is a game sent in my show underscore. Um, there is a chance that over the year, between Christmas and New Year period, that I'm going to be away, but I will be uh, home for New Year if I am uh, going to be away, but... Uh, you know, there's a chance I'm going to head up to the mountains and just uh, enjoy myself for at least a couple of uh, days at, uh, you know, get some skiing time in there as well. But uh, if I do, I do, If uh, but uh, pre-recording content, so there'll be something up there for you guys every day. If not, then, well, of course, there'll still be something there for you guys every day, because all the content will be pre-recorded, and I can always upload that for ya. But uh, do follow my twitch.tv slash strangers123. If I'm around, I will, of course, be streaming. Now, getting on with this... North Carolina in a tier 10 game. It's a game on tier of the cruiser, but uh, three tier, well, three battleships per team. They get a Missouri and an Ithmo, we get double three the Lol de Gros. So I could have put the Ithmo on our team or the Missouri on our team and given each team a German battleships. We get a Bismarck underneath as well, so it's basically three battleship, uh, German battleships versus one. <coughs> Sandro Moskva, we get a Minotaur and a Hindenburg. A Minotaur. I mean, if he has a smoke screen, he can definitely achieve something. If he's running a radar minotaur, he might be in a little bit of trouble. Otherwise, uh, Neptune and Atul also, we get the, the uh, eh, more Royal Navy cruisers. They get double rune plus Moskva and Zao, so they, get, they definitely do get a pretty good chunk of uh, uh, firepower put in their cruisers. And on top of that, Missouri, if they have better guns than Friedlal de Grosses. We do get a Kaba, so uh, we basically don't actually have a tier 10 destroyer, but we get a Fletcher, Benson, and a Lol Yang, which is better than the Benson and Z23. Because, unfortunately, Benson kind of has just been power crept out. Now, anyways, uh, someone's asking the Fletcher for a uh, smoke. Assuming it's the uh, stuff over there. It, it is actually the Kaba that's asking for a smoke. We spot an enemy Ethmo because uh, Ethmo has uh, this amazing thing called jack shit concealment. Let's see, did the Fletcher actually smoke up? Doesn't look like it. But we're, look, we're looking like we're trying to line up a shot against that. I probably wouldn't open fire immediately. And we do see that uh, there is a Z-23 ahead of us. And we're looking at the torpedoes, but uh, there's only one ship on the opponent team that actually would have the torpedoes loaded early enough to have them already on our side of the map by there. Anyways, so there we go. Z-23 does get spotted. He's fully upgraded. We're lining this in mode. He's not moving as fast as, he, as uh, that. These torpedoes are unlikely to reach us because the Z-23 launched them from far away. And there we go. We've already successfully evaded them. Our Benson's taking a little bit of damage, but for the moment we're deciding to be quiet. For the paying attention to the map, we'll see that the um, uh, there is a Moskva, there is the Sanjo, and a Turp is spotted over there, so we're really just missing one more enemy battleship. Now Benson and Zed get spotted in front of us, that's, that's uh, two out of their three destroyers on our side of the map, so we definitely might want to consider um, having a think about that, having, I guess we just move the mouse or bumped it into something. But uh, we're, we're now moving up, we're trying to take advantage of our stealth. Check that out, 11.8 kilometers surface detectability range on this North Carolina. This is a full concealment build. Let's see if uh, pressing hold and gauge does in fact work. We have 6 kilometer range, so uh, we'll have the A range upgrade because we're going in 23 kilometers main battery firing range. So that's just kind of a thing. Like, if you see a North Carolina and above US battleship not having at least 6 kilometers dual purpose range, the guy fucked up. Now, our fleet that is. Well, um, fun and engaging as the uh, Ithamo even apologizes in chat. That's a pretty pretty rare occurrence, especially at that kind of an angle, but we're taking full advantage of our concealment. Benson gets spotted, I would have focused, uh, you know, I, I definitely would focus uh, on shooting the Benson. Shooting an angle of ruin probably isn't going to get us too far. Anyways, uh, maybe we can, uh, you know, just uh, at this point, let me just uh, pause that. Very useful thing when you're trying to do stuff like that, if I could just, uh, without crashing the replay, please. Okay, it's uh, bro breaking me. There you go. You can basically just double M like that, and you'll be able to. Um, uh, you you'll be able to see over the island a little bit better. Anyways, the Benson um, is taking a little bit of a hammering, and I'm, I'm not sure sure we're gonna hit that. Yep, and there we go. We see all of our shells do fly over the target. Probably not the world uh, the best user of ammunition there, but now that we're finally detected. I definitely would have engaged the Benson earlier, but the Minotaur does manage to pick him up, so that's uh, not too bad of a result overall. Z-23 at this point is uh, concealed. Hopefully the Hindenburg will go out there and detect them. Otherwise the Turpins and the Missouri are sufficiently far out of the game that they're never really going to achieve anything. And as long as this uh, 
uh, Hindenburg is uh, kind of between us and the Z. We can safely head in this direction and try to achieve something on the southern side of the map because we can see they're all pushing in that direction. Being able to tuck ourselves in where this Minotaur is could definitely be quite useful. Now with the Z, all of the torpedoes spotted, I definitely think that we could safely just head immediately in this direction and engage the stuff that's over there. Because chasing the Z is kind of not doing us any good, it's not really doing the team any good. And we're kind of just uh, dawdling about not really doing anything. Especially knowing that currently the Z-23 is more than 11.8 kilometers away from us and that the guy only gets 9.8 kilometer torpedo range. So it's really just up to the Minotaur and the uh, the Hindenburg to uh, catch this guy. We're never really going to be able to achieve anything against that on our own. Especially considering that we're running the stock float plane scout, which means that we have such an incredibly long cycle time on that, that it probably just isn't worth it to use that for something like that. And there we go, we do react and head towards the south, realizing that it's really just a futile waste of our time to go chasing some silly little Z-23. Of course, if the Z-23 does get a very good torpedo broadside against us, then we turn away and take all eight of them. There is a chance that we're just going to get eliminated right off the uh, right off the bat like that, despite being full HP. Anyways, now we have an option of either trying to emulge the rune over the island or shoot this Neptune. The Neptune may be trying, uh, considering to angle or something. Slightly aimed above at this point, but we should still be able to pick up some good damage against this guy if he doesn't uh, immediately intern. And there we go, we get a very good salvo, 32,000 health. But if we aim slightly lower, I believe we should have been able to one-shot kill him. But the Free Rush does pick up the rest. So we do get a nice 32,000 damage salvo. And we eliminate one of the tier 9 enemy cruisers. Although not the world's most dangerous cruiser overall. The Neptune's a pretty bad ship in my opinion. I mean with a smoke screen at least you can wank on stuff. You can do a lot of damage but it just isn't fun overall. And that's kind of one of the things you need to, to uh, consider. But that, hey that's of course my own personal opinion. I'm playing it with radar because I'm silly. And it's the only way you can actually have some fun in that ship in my opinion. Regardless, continuing the advance against this enemy fleet of roads. One of them is stock, one of them is uh, top. They're both uh, in the same division, probably just helping each other grind. But again, being in, in North Carolina, we are a rather slower battleship, of course. And in my opinion, anything short of a 30-knot ship is a slow ship, which is why I avoid playing any... Well, I just avoid playing battleships overall nowadays, because I don't enjoy being in slow ships. Anyways, the friendly Minotaur finally picks up the uh, Z-23 as we decide to shoot at the Missouri again over an island instead of trying to pick up the runes, but of course trying to MLG runes like that is not really probably going to be the, wor uh, the world's best usage of our resources. Unfortunately, we missed the Missouri. <clears throat> just double aiming over the islands like... Well, okay, I need to do this first, but just double aiming over islands can be very useful to uh, figure out uh, what people are doing, how they're, tra uh, they're traveling and whatnot. And being able to actually drag our sights, because keep in mind, even uh, <clears throat> even if like, I'll just take control of the sights here, even if the guy is advancing like this, if we aim as if the water is a flat thing, because islands don't really count in that sense, if we just aim uh, properly, we'll still be able to get the island, the shells over the island, provided the ballistics permit us to do so. Anyways, this survivability expert Missouri, yes, that's the thing, is coming in, and there we go. We're now finally able to line up a good shot. Fortunately, the, the alt indicator, the uh, horizontal line, doesn't just seem to be there. But again, if we just have a look at that, we can see that the target is 12.4 kilometers away. And slightly, we're closing in on it. We're aiming at 12.7 kilometers away, which means that our aim is slightly higher than normal. Just a, a little something to keep in mind if you have the, uh, the indicator well. And, and I know I make this mistake too, but uh, just a little something to keep in mind. If you watch your replays, you'll see this Im become immediately apparent. You can see 12.7, target 12.4 away. You do still want to try to aim for the waterline area and not at uh, halfway up this freeboard. Now, let's just go... Uh, Play ball and see where these uh, shells land. You can see they do land slightly high. We do pick up 15k damage, but uh, if those three shells had been into the citadel, then there is a small probability of that. We could have picked up uh, potentially a lot more damage. And again, slightly high. This guy's turning in now, so ooh, but without US dispersion, if those all hit the superstructure, we could have done some pretty amazing damage. But unfortunately, the guy just hard in turns and evades that. Probably not being too happy with the 15,000 damage we uh, salvo, we just planted in his side with only our front turrets. Yeah, he definitely ain't happy about it. He sent a uh, salvo back against us, but all of it's going towards our belt. He does actually in-cap our rear turret. It's not a big deal at all. Who cares about that rear turret at this point? Because we just need to make sure that we keep ourselves sufficiently angled, properly angled, and engage this Missouri correctly. Because otherwise, well, we could risk losing a lot of health. Of course, uh, having the turret available both to shoot right now could have been rather nice. We could have picked up the kill on this guy already, but it just, I don't think it's going to matter too much. Missouri goes down to the allied Hindenburg, and at this point, the gearing was actually temporarily spotted. We should be aware of that guy in the event he did decide to drop torpedoes, but, but if he did drop torpedoes, they would have reached us already. 
or they would all be hitting the wreck of his uh, teammate because that would have blocked his path. So I think this turn over here is actually surprisingly safe for us. And there you go, torpedoes will need to be spotted now if they're actually going to do any significant amount of damage for us, and they're not, so we get away with this. Now, going around the corner, we're going to try to line up the enemy Senjo, ignoring the Moskva, who also could potentially be broadside, but the double free that might be able to pick up that. We're going to go for the much more pressing and immediate concern in the form of his tier turn. Japanese cruiser, and if we do get within the 8km range, or even the 9km uh, range, in you know, which is the distance we, we could successfully push one down, he could definitely do some nasty work to our health bar with a face full of F3 torpedoes. I wouldn't bother lining the road, I would immediately engage and uh, attempt to destroy the Senjo, and in this kind of situation, very well aimed, we are predicting he's going to turn away, and that's exactly what the Senjo does, but at this kind of an angle, and the fact that we're slightly under lead, we're not going to achieve much, and there we go, only 8k damage, so it's not too bad, but uh, it's not great either. We're showing a little bit of broadside to this guy, he can, and there he goes, so we, with just rear turrets, he picks up 7k damage against us, and now with his front turrets as well, he picks up an additional 3, something you do have to be aware of, I've already healed at this point, let me just quickly check, we... Um... Just kidding. <clears throat> okay, uh, I think I broke the replay. Um, pretty sure, I think I think that's the uh, heal flag, but uh, I'm actually not sure at this point. Because we don't seem to be able to regenerate too much. And there you go, torpedoes are complete fluffs from these, uh, the Senjo. Those are definitely F3s coming in, so nothing else other than the Senjo could launch them. Shooting at an angle Senjo is usually a nice waste of time overall. We're picking up a lot of the attention from the opponent's fleet at this point. So at this point, I probably would consider doing a just an away turn immediately. The Neptune and the Moskva are having a fight with each other as we salva the route. Again, slightly under lead thing to keep in mind with US guns is they are really, really derpy with their um, their shell uh, ballistics. They're really, really slow in overall, and it seems like that our Minolol is actually playing as a radar Minolol. Not a bad decision overall. And like I said in this map, he, he can definitely achieve something, but it can also be rather difficult for him. Now, I don't, have, don't know if I mentioned it, but there's no post-battle results screen, so we'll just try to be uh, a little bit faster with this. Slightly high against the rune, not a major problem, but a rune turning away uh, is usually not something that you're going to get to reliably Citadel, but we still pick up 20k damage thanks to the target's turn back, and, you know, preventing the uh, proper, uh, you know, the, preventing the Citadel damage, but we still get a lot of damage. So, as the thing about the German cruisers, they have a tendency when broadside to bleed a crap load of AP damage, whereas a Senja, you shoot it like that, there's a good chance you're just going to you know, overpen a crap load, but if you do get shells into the Citadel, it can definitely be very dangerous. Now, in this situation, I would definitely engage the enemy's uh, Z-23, unless this uh, Senjo wants to make an intern, but I don't think he's going to fully intern. He should be aware of our existence, and I think he's just trying to keep his angle, so... Uh, personally, I would have shot the destroyers, and overall, if you're grinding the ship, shooting destroyers, and getting a good delete on something, like a Z-23 at that kind of range could achieve a lot of experience for us. He's now smoking up, but the radar mineral is probably going to put an end to him. The heal's coming up, I would immediately use it, and now consider shooting at either Pudding or the Turpets. Well, of course, shooting the Rune is going to give us the best angle. The Pudding and the Turpets are just so much closer. That's not the world's best angle. Prince Eugen is at a better angle for us to engage, and he doesn't really have much in the way of ability to turn. Again, predicting that the guy's likely going to turn away. This time, giving the proper correct lead, but uh, he doesn't really have much space. He doesn't have the reaction time either, so... Uh, Unfortunately, only five overpen, and that's the thing about the cruisers like that. If they turn away from you like that, there's a good chance you're just going to overpen. Double fire and low HP, I would just damage control party that. We're never going to survive this at this rate, I believe, unless the team suddenly kills all of their stuff. Because uh, well, I think we're just being incredibly aggressive at this point, which is perfectly fine, because uh, we've achieved a lot of things for this team, and it seems like they're not even going to bother focusing us anymore. Slightly underlet, in my opinion, the, the shells will fall towards the back end of the ship. We want the shells to fall towards the... Middle of the ship, and there you go, see they're falling just underneath the rear toes. We get an incredibly lucky salvo anyway, so a 16k additional damage. And it's even like the opponent team, instead of trying to focus us down, is trying to deal with the Hindenburg in front of them. It's not too bad of a choice by them. But hey, this game is basically already secure, and with the lower HP, we do get slightly faster reload. This guy's going to keep turning away, most likely, just to try to get his torpedoes off against the Hindenburg. So uh, we do slightly adjust for that, send a bit of a bracket, and there you go, the Z-23 shows up. But overall, a pretty, pretty decently played game, we do pick up the last kill. Oh, we don't pick up, we don't pick up the kill, but somebody picks up the kill there, ending the match. Uh, I think that the only real major biggie is, well, first of all, US ballistics, get used to them. We got some very good RNG with our dispersion, so that permitted us to pick up some really good damage. Uh, the, on the only bad shot overall was uh, the shot against the Neptune, it wasn't the bad, the first one. It wasn't a bad shot, it was just a bit of a 
bit of a chancy one. We needed aim slightly lower, we would have picked it up. That's a that's a common theme that uh, I do see in quite a lot of games, including my own. And I do have a tendency to, to uh, slightly over aim the target because of the way the precision mode, quote unquote, from the Wargaming's lock onto a target uh, thingy works. And if you, for example, uh, you know, take a, a match against bots, so or have a friend of yours in a training room, just sail in a straight line, you know, you, you shoot at them with lock, you shoot at them without lock, and you'll watch most of the time you shall, you know, most players, they'll either fall short or they'll fall above. But from what I've seen, most players seem to have the shells fly above the target because they're slightly aiming over it and they're kind of being rescued, quote unquote, by the precision mode system and the uh, the target locking system. So just just keep that in mind as a player. Other than that, uh, I believe we should have uh, tried to shoot destroyers a lot more. It's a very important thing. US uh, battleships like this are incredibly good at shooting destroyers at around about 12, uh, anything sub 15 kilometer range. These things are incredibly good. If you can land your shells on target, because they have a tendency to uh, get a lot of shells in the central area, which gives you a lot of chances to hit the destroyer and hit them really, really hard, especially if they're poorly angled against you. And you can get a shot that rakes through their stern straight to their bow and does full penetration damage for 4,400. 15, I think, in the North Carolina on a full pen. I'm actually not sure, but a, a lot of damage, considering the fact that these are 16-inch US AP shells. And the only other thing to pick up is really just uh, could have moved south towards the enemy fleet earlier, and we could have probably sneak, not, well, snuck a few more shots in there, but considering that we're playing a South North Carolina, not doing so, and having the ability to disengage and pick the engagement and shoot whenever we want to is always nice. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this free play cast. Uh, the, with the rank season ongoing, I've got received a lot of rank replays already. I will be going through them as best and fast as I can, probably pr uh, putting more focus on the rank replays compared to the uh, few, I think it's like eight, nine remaining replays that are non-ranked, with currently already having received like five or six uh, rank replays. So um, I'll try to pro pro focus on the rank replays because the rank season is currently ongoing. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this replay analysis. If you want to send in your own, send them into replays.strangers123 at gmail.com. There will be a link, well, address in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, tell me why in the comment section below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Enjoy your holiday season. Take care.